Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So what we're gonna do today is talk about, oh, I don't, it's, it's gonna be kind of a, a weird video. Um, how long do you have to be a homesteader before you know you're gonna make it, okay? There's been families, who, who, there's been a lot of families we have known who have you know, started to go down the homesteading journey and they just didn't make it. They turned, they basically turned around and went back home after a certain amount of time or they moved away or we have seen a lot of families do this. And we have heard now from two different people uh, that a lot of families try homesteading. One who lives in our immediate area who said a lot of people come out here, they try to live out here and uh, they move out here thinking it's going to be the, some kind of Shangri-La and it does not happen. It just, it's, they, they're here for maybe a year or two and then they just move back to wherever they came from or somewhere else near a city somewhere. And then there was a, a conversation we overheard, I think a couple of years ago, and it was... No, it was more like more than four years ago. It was when we were first getting started ourselves. Okay. And this person mentioned that if you can make it five years as a homesteader, five years then you can make it, okay? Most people give up within the first five years of becoming a homesteader. Now, here's what I mean by becoming a homesteader because there's all kinds of definitions out there about that word, homesteading. There are people who live in the suburbs inside of metropolitan areas and they're homeowners and they call themselves homesteaders. Most of those people have a vision of one day moving off grid or moving out into a rural area where they're farther away from all of the trappings of city and suburban life. And that's okay. And they're learning how to be homesteaders. And that's exactly what we did. But I'm not talking about people who are living in suburbia and who call themselves homesteaders when really they're just homeowners. Okay. I'm talking about people who actually cut the cord and they move out and they're in the middle of nowhere and it's up to them to become self-sustainable or at least more self-sustainable than they were previously and um, provide most of what they're going to use and just become less dependent on the system. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We've, we've had um, lots of conversations about this. There's, and don't get us wrong, like we're all at different steps of our learning and our practice and all those things. We're, there's none of us that have exactly the same goals. There's none of us that are at exactly the same place. So if you're calling yourself an urban homesteader, that's great because you're practicing a lot of skills that most people aren't practicing. Um, we but, did the same thing. Yeah, and, and we didn't even know what homesteading was back then. We just we were just thinking, okay, it would be cool to learn how to can beans, you know, or it would be cool to learn how make to pickles. make bread from scratch, or, you know, it would be cool to learn how to plant a garden. Like, that's the kind of things that we were doing. We just thought, okay, that that's something that we want to do. We had no, we did not call ourselves homesteaders. I hadn't even heard that word back then. I mean, there was... Right? Yeah, yeah. We were just trying to. We were trying to figure out. A lot of it was become came from a preparedness mindset. You know, how do we become more sustainable? How do we learn how to do these things if one day they're taken away from us and we have to do them ourselves? And so that was where a lot of the learning stemmed from um, before we learned about homesteading. But here's the deal. So what, what I want to talk about today is just what you, the vision someone needs to have when beginning this homesteading journey because so many people come out with an idea of, oh, we'll just see how it works and we'll just try it out. And There's a lot that you can do in an urban environment to learn. There's tons that you can do. Um, but let's be honest with ourselves and realize that when you buy that property, when you move to that property in the country <laughs> and you're ready to go full force and you're like, Oh, I'm going to do this. Okay. Like that's a major step. Like you're no you're no longer um practicing. You're like full-fledged. So, so really that's what we're that's what we're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, because I think so many people come out here and they they don't realize the work involved 
with you know having some livestock. You know, sometimes you have to train livestock, you have to care for them every day, you have to feed them. Uh, you know, the work that involves a garden, you know, to be able to put up most of your produce and the food in your pantry that you're going to be using. There is so much work involved that I think a lot of people, they just did not understand, you know, the kind of commitment it takes to put into a homestead, to make it productive and to make it, you know, produce for you. And um, it's really a completely different lifestyle. And if you have not been willing to cut the cord with things like convenience food that you're used to back in, you know, the city or, you know, you don't like living, you know, an hour or an hour and a half, two hours away from a major metropolitan area where you can go to Aldi's or Trader Joe's or whatever favorite store that you have back home uh, that, you, that you're used to going shopping with. Um, if you're not willing to do without and you get out there, that man, that really, it eats at you. And so really what, I, what we're trying to do here is, man, make sure that you really want to do this. Make sure that you're really committed to doing this. Because, um, again, we have seen so many families uh, come out or start their homesteading journey. Or we have gotten emails from people who have started their homesteading journey and then they just decided to call quits. So one of the phrases we've talked about here on our homestead quite a bit is burn the boats. We've, we've, we've talked about that. It's Hernando Cortez, I think in the 1500s, went to Mexico, and he and his men decided to burn the boats. And he was, I think, the, the first Spaniard in 600 years to actually conquer Mexico because of his uh, ability to inspire his men. So he, he gave very good speeches to his men, and the final thing that he did was he burned the boats signifying to his men there's no going back because a lot of these homesteaders when they move out to a place a rural place like where we're at they keep ties a lot of ties they have property back in the city or they have assets back in the city they they haven't burned the boats and so it's really easy for them to just move back right or they have friends and family that maybe are <sighs> Sorry. I don't yeah, know. Are you go ahead. Cut this? No, go ahead. This is good. I'm not cutting here, so just keep going. <laughs> they have friends and family who I, I want to say are a little enabling. Um, when you decide that you're going to do something, and then you know you you have friends and family that are like, "Oh, but do you really want to do that? You know, that really that." looks kind of hard. Why don't you just come back to my house and, you know, have a shower or do laundry here just 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 to today, you know, give yourself a break. <laughs> um friends and family, you know who you are and I have taken advantage of laundry situation using a washer and dryer at a friend's home once, twice. I think twice in the last almost five years. Now. Twice in five years. Um, I have visited the laundromat a little more than twice, but only a handful of times. For like big items like... Big, um, yeah, like comforters and like, you know, at the end of a season when when we put the coats away, the coats needs to be washed and the blankets, heavy comforters need to be washed. Okay, I really want you to know, like, I am not trying to tell you that going to the laundromat is wrong. Like, I'm not trying to tell you that going and washing clothes at your friend's home is wrong. The thing is, if you allow yourself to continue to do those things, you're going to be right back where you started. And that's okay. Like, you you should have the opportunity to do what you want to do. Just be honest with yourself and say, okay, but maybe I don't really want to do that. Like, But if you do want to do something, like, pour yourself 100% into it and burn the ships. Like, don't keep going back and forth because you keep going back and forth long enough, you're going to end up back, back right where you started. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that, um, and, and here's the deal too. I'm not saying that, I'm not talking about off-grid homesteads, even on-grid homesteads. I, we know a lot of people who were on-grid homesteads that called it quits and they just sold everything and went back to the city. I mean, these were people who had electric, they had a lot of the things we don't have here, and they still called it quits because they didn't understand the workload that was in front of them and to put the effort into being successful. And so I'm not, we're not poo-pooing anyone who decides to get on grid 
or you know decides to have a little more things than we have to make life comfortable for you okay that's not what we're talking about my thing is make sure that you understand the commitment involved the hard work that's involved and that you have dedicated yourself 100 percent to making this successful because even if you're an on-grid homestead an off-grid homestead it doesn't matter we want you to be successful. We want you to be here in five years and still be going down that road. We're here now five years, almost five years. We've been here five years, or off-grid for five years, okay? Almost. Almost off-grid for five years. At the end of the summer. And there's no way we can imagine going back. And there's no way I can imagine you know, pulling up stakes here and going back. I would never go back to the city. I, 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 would, I will never leave this land. I will be buried on this land, and I mean... There's no way. I had a I had an actual nightmare about it once where I dreamt that I was in an electric house and I, I woke up <laughs> in an electric house and I didn't know what to do. I, I mean it was it was really a nightmare for me. Like I really was scared and then I woke up from my dream thinking, okay, phew. Whew, that's not my reality. Thank goodness. I'm here at home. Um, this is our home. I, I do... Do we want to talk about... More about that or... What? This is our home? With? No. Okay, so here's, here's what I... What I really... I look at homesteading as your identity. I look at the people that we've seen as being successful... The ones that are the ones that have poured their heart and soul into something, it has become, literally become who they are. Um, they look at the work they do as work, but they also look at the work they do as a means of fulfillment and seeing what they do, not only in this amount of time, but in the long term. Like, they have... They have a vision for the long term, not just for today. Um, but it has become that those long term goals have become who they are. And it's no longer just something that they're doing. It's become their literal identity. Um, it's really easy when you first start out something new to see, wow, this is cool. It's exciting. Like, yeah. I'm proud of myself. Like... Um, pat myself on the back or, you know, I did something that I've never done before. Uh, you know, that's really, that's human nature. You can do that. Um, what I'm talking about is the long term, like the day in and the day out. This last week was a little, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't too rough. We survived. <laughs> <laughs> but both Zach and Caleb were sick and... I'm a mom. I deal with this kind of stuff all the time. Like, if you're a mom, you know what I mean. You've changed a million diapers. You just deal with this arena. I don't wear diapers. <laughs> and Kayla doesn't either. The thing is I'm talking about is, like, when you're sick and when your kids are sick and stuff is coming out both ends and you don't have a flushing toilet, that gets a little bit... Um, these are the kind of things that make you say and question yourself and say, is this really what I want? I'm not saying I question myself because I've been through almost five years now. I know what I want. I know that I would not trade a flushing toilet for this life. Like, I wouldn't. There is no way I would. Um... But when you have this kind of stuff and, you know, your kids are sick and you don't have a washing machine and you're taking out, literally, I took out, like, what, 10 buckets in less than three days. And Zach was sick, so I, you know, I was emptying them all myself. Again, I'm not trying to, I'm really not trying to complain. I'm, I'm really just trying to put it into perspective and say, you know, these are the kind of real life things that happen. And life can be all peachy, you know. You can pat yourself on the back for something amazing that you learned the first time. And isn't this cool? And wow, I don't have to have running water. And I, oh, that's kind of cool. But then 
day in and day out when real life sets in? Is it really, really what you want? Like, I think what we're trying to say is, is this really, really what you want? And, and, and decide that it is really what you want. You got it in your mind, burn the boats. And even physically in your life, burn the boats. Um, because if you decide you want to go down this road, you know, it's going to be even more costly for you in the long run, both emotionally and physically, to decide to get back in those boats and go back. You know, you're going to have to deal with, you know, reselling a prop, piece of property that didn't work out for you um, because you didn't have the commitment involved and it should be, just becomes a headache. Um, your kids weren't, you know, ready to jump off into something like this. They didn't understand that it was going to be this kind of level of commitment and this kind of level of work uh, to work on the homestead. And to, so you got to prepare yourselves. And I have, just to be honest with you, if you're thinking about doing something like this and, you know, you have children who are preteen or teen, I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be much harder for you. Because if your kids are used to having Game Boys and tablets and cell phone coverage and all the, the conveniences and going to with their friends to, to the McDonald's or whatever you know fast food hangout they go to in the city, and then all of a sudden you move them out in the middle of nowhere, you know, two hours or an hour and a half away from any metropolitan area, major metropolitan area, those teens and preteens are going to have the hardest time dealing with it. And they're going to make you, the adult, your time much, much more difficult. When we had our kids get started on this young, Caleb knows nothing different. He was he, he was born and then seven weeks later he was off grid. So, um, and then Joshua mostly has lived now his most of his life now off grid. So it's a lot easier for your, your children, a young family, to do this than a family with teens, preteens. And I get it. I mean, here's the deal, folks. You want, if your kids can do this with you, it's going to make your job much more easier because you can share that workload with your teens or preteens. They can share in the chores to get the jobs done around the homestead. But let me tell you something. It's like the Matrix. If you unplug your, your kids too late, I mean, well, it's just the way it is. I mean, all people make all these analogies to Matrix, you know, in our lifestyle, in our lifetime. But really, it's true. If you unplug yourself when you're so connected to the, the system and you're sustaining yourself on that system, and you don't know anything else, and, and your kids don't know anything else, I'm just saying it's going to be more difficult. And we've seen it over and over again from families, and we've heard it in our inboxes and emails that families who start this too late, um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. The one that I've heard a lot, too, is, and I've heard some several testimonies to this, um, is young couples who have moved off-grid or started homesteading before they've had children. Mm -hmm. And then the children come into the mix, they have babies, you know, they get pregnant, and all of a sudden, this is too hard. We can't do this with kids. And they head back to their urban lifestyle. Um, I don't know what I, again, each to their own. Like, I, I really seriously want you to know that I have no judgment for any decisions that people make. Like, I have no judgment. What we want to do is to save you from making a decision, a rash decision even, um, by looking at us and saying, oh, I want to do what they do because, you know, it looks cool. Well, we, we're just, we just want to be real and, and what's that? help you to understand that it's not all just cool. <laughs> what's, what's that you're reading? I mean, what's that word? It's called metal. M-E-T-T-L-E -T -T -E or E-L. You know, to how a person person would measure their metal. Um, it was like a simple. It was like a word of strength, right? Like I don't know what comes to. I mean, I I read a lot of um, historical fiction, and I kind of think gumption. Well, like, I, I've read metal. You know, yeah, you know, proving someone's proving, someone's proving your metal. metal. Yeah. Uh, it's not metal. It's an M E T A L. It's M E T T L E. I think. Um, it's it's about. Do you have what it takes? Clint Eastwood said it best. Every man's got to know his limitations. Um, and so what, she's, what we're all saying here is just know your limitations. If you know you can do this and you guys are really gung-ho, understand it's going to be hard. You guys can't shrink at the first level of or first sign of difficulty. You have to push through. You have to burn the boats. Or oh. the second, third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. We know it's hard. Um, but we're trying to give you some encouragement. We know you guys can do this. And, um, you know, there's just... 
some people I know who just, they, they can't do it, but that's okay too. You know, go do the best you can and learn, and then maybe try another, another time or, I, I don't know, but make sure when you step off into something like this, you're well prepared to burn the boats and put 110% effort into it. Because that way, you're gonna, it's going to be uh, a lot less stress on you and your family. Okay. I think the best thing that I would say that I did personally was that I never, ever allowed myself, not one time, to think of how good I had it before. Um, how in, in any aspect of life, oh wow! Oh, it was so good when I had a oh, you know so washing nice. machine. Yeah, when I washed machine, or you know when I could put all those dishes in the dishwasher, or it was so nice when um, I don't know when I could. I, I can't even think of examples for you because it's so far removed from me now. But I never let myself think that. Like I never let myself think, oh wow, it was so nice when I could. Oh, but I have to do it this way today. No, I never let myself do that. I also never let my, just the, just the way that life happened, like we were thrown full force into the hard work of homesteading. So it was like sink or swim and it was every day, get up, fall into bed at night. And um, I was not online at that point. Um, I had very little contact with anyone outside of our homesteading um, experience. So for me, it was, it was really cold turkey. Um, I had basically no contact with people from my past or um, um, it, the internet. I was off the internet for a full year. I, I look back, that was the hardest, the hands down hardest year of my life. And a lot of it sucked. I'm just going to tell you. Um, <laughs> but I came through it. And I came through it a lot stronger, and I realized what I was made of. And I think, had I not done those things, I'm not sure that I would have had the full commitment that I do today. Because now I can look back at that, and I can say, wow, things are really cake compared to what they used to be. Like, I, I mean, it's really cake. <laughs> it's not like, um, you know, I... I went through a struggle and you, when you turn around and you see the struggle that you came through, I can do anything now. Hey guys, I want to keep this video around 20, 25 minutes. So um, we wanted to make this video by, hey, listen, if you can make it five years, you can make it. Okay. We see a lot of people drop off within the first five year period. And we've had two people now come to us and tell us uh, that that's really, you know, the, what they see as well. They've been living this, you know, a lot longer than we have. And you know, five years, if you can make it five years, there's a lot of people who try to do this type of lifestyle and they just don't make it. And, and so we want you guys to make it. We want you guys to have the best experience possible and to, um, and to be positive about the whole thing. So listen, if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll do more videos like this. We have lots of other topics coming up uh, that will, and I think a lot of people like seeing the whole, you know, kind of non-scripted you know yeah. so we'll do more videos like this if you guys want it to want us to but like us uh, on Facebook subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, if you like the video check out this list of amazing folks these are our patrons they make all of our videos possible uh, we cannot do what we do here on YouTube without these guys they are the executive producers of our show for more information you can go to patreon.com slash an American homestead to see all the benefits other than that, again, like, subscribe, check out the videos on the left, and we'll see you next time on American Homestead.